When you're reading a book or listening to a podcast or watching a video, there's a lot being thrown at you, right? And you've got to try to follow all of it. You're trying to make sense of all of it. I kind of have a simple rule that's worked well for me over the years, which is I just try to find one thing. I've interviewed hundreds of guests from all over the world, done over 150 million downloads. It's been this incredible experience. And in today's episode, I wanted to give you some of the stuff that I've taken out of it from some of the stoic guests and not so stoic guests that I've been lucky enough to interview on the Daily Stoic Podcast, and I hope that all of them do as much for you as they did for me. I thought it was interesting you're saying, you see people in the gym and they're like, I just wanna get in shape. And you say, but sort of for what or how? You're forcing them to be specific, but how do we channel that? Or how does a person find their reason or their canvas to be useful. Well, I think the first of all, the most important thing is what you just said, to have a clear vision and a clear goal. Okay, you want to be in shape. What is the reason why you want to be in shape? Because being in shape, it's just very broad. Yeah. What does that mean? The, how do you get motivated if you don't have a specific goal? Yeah. And some people say, well, the doctor told me that I'm now 55 years old. My cholesterol is high. My blood pressure is high. And they thought instead of just going on drugs and prescribing me medication, I should try vigorous exercising every day for a little bit, not too long, but just every day something. But I always tell them, I said, look, if there's a specific goal that you have, where you say, okay, by Christmas, I want to have 20 pounds less. Now you're shooting for a specific goal. I very intentionally try to make it a part of my brand that nobody's right all the time, including myself. Mm -hmm. One of the things I repeat to my audience over and over again is you can go through all the research. There's not a single psychological intervention that has a 100% hit rate. Sure. In fact, almost none of them have a 50% hit rate. <laughs> and even if it does hit for somebody, it never solves everything. Yeah. So all we're talking about here are just tools in a toolbox. Yes. Stoicism, Great. tool in a toolbox. Uh -huh. Therapy, tool in a toolbox. Meditation, tool in a toolbox. Let's never lose sight of that because our natural impulse, just as humans, is to find this thing that helped us yeah. and turn it into a religion. Yes. Turn it into everything. Yeah. And that this is gonna, it saved me, it's gonna save the world and everybody needs to hear about it all the time. Whenever you're sitting there and you're going like, man, I need a vacation. Yeah. Like I just need to be in Mexico right now. I find it so funny because I'm like, do you actually want to be in Mexico right now? Or do you like the person you think you're gonna be sure. in Mexico right now? Yes. And I think it's kind of the same theme from your book is just you get what you are. Yeah. So just be the best version of yourself as possible. It's funny, in meditations, there's a passage where Marcus Aurelius is doing exactly that. I know you think you wanna get away from it all yeah. in the country or the beach or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, but actually whatever you need is inside of you right now. You can retreat and go on vacation inside your own soul yeah. right now. And I think it's true, right? We think, okay, if I can just get away from all these external things, yeah. then I won't feel what I'm feeling. Sometimes that's what we do. And then sometimes we do like a substance or a thought yeah. pattern or whatever, the other version of escape. But what we really just have to deal with is whatever that feeling is. Mm -hmm. And if you can deal with that feeling and process it and work on it, that's actually a more sustainable and permanent solution to that thing. I was thinking of other sort of success problems that stoicism helps with, like haters is probably one, or people who don't oh. like you, or mm -hmm. negative attention on top yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, the more, especially if you're if your version of success or what you're pursuing is going to make you more public, yeah. you are going to have to deal with all sorts of things that, at least at current, you have not faced this magnitude yeah. of negative attention. Yes. And I've seen people buckle under that if they don't have the toolkit. And the toolkit doesn't have to be sophisticated, by the way. Like, rule number one, don't go looking for it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's kind of like, all right, if you're going to like do shuffle sprints on top of like broken floorboards, you're going to stub your toe all the time. And then, yeah. I mean, I'll admire you if you have the best stub toe fix, but maybe you just shouldn't run across the floorboards yeah. <laughs> barefoot, <laughs> which is what a lot of folks do when they're kind of hunting for comments. But being human, ending up fixating on the one or two people who are awful. People tend to think stoicism is having no emotions, but the real thing is to be able to understand emotions, process them, and then use them, or at the very least, understand other people's emotions and be able to manipulate the wrong word, but use those emotions to help them or you accomplish what is supposed to be accomplished. Yeah, I mean, the, the proper idea to me is sort of a lot of what I meditate about and is in, in Buddhism, where you're not trying to repress your emotions because, first of all, you can't. We are emotional animals. 
And if ever you have tried to repress your emotions, particularly in a state of meditation, you see you have n zero control over them, right? They're popping up. You know, it's the way we're wired. So the proper stance is, I'm not going to repress emotions, but I'm going to understand them. I'm going to see them as they occur with a degree of distance. I'm going to see that I'm angry in this moment. I'm going to almost like have a, I like to imagine it as if I'm like six, six inches away from myself. I don't know why that metaphor come up. But I'm Only looking, six inches? That doesn't seem that far. Well, I'm, it's out this side. It's like here. However, okay. that's like a more like a foot, I okay. guess. Right. And I'm looking at what I'm thinking or feeling from that distance, almost from the outside. And I'm still feeling it, but I'm seeing it as if it's from um, as if I'm another person. I know this is a strange concept. Yeah. But you can observe your own emotions while you're feeling them. And then you they don't have power over you. Then you can say, OK, I'm angry. Why am I angry? So number one, I recognize the emotion. Number two, why am I angry? Is it stem from something weeks ago, months ago, or earlier today? And then what do I do with my anger? Sometimes you want to use your anger. You want to channel your anger. So when you're in sports, if you don't have that kind of drive and that anger, when you're in a bet, you know, when you're down by 12 points. It's like an extra gear. Yeah. You can pull. Yeah. There's a little bit of anger and, and even, I don't know, um, hatred or something. You, you just despise the enemy. You're going to crush them. Right. You use that emotion. But as Phil Jackson said, if that emotion controls you throughout 48 minutes of a game, you're useless. You drain yourself. Right. You can't control it. You also make mistakes. You make mistakes. So you need to be focused, but you also need to be able to use those emotions. That's where I use that metaphor of the rider and the horse, which I've repeated many, many times. Maybe that's another medallion that we could, yeah. could manufacture. No, no, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video and a bunch of our videos that allow us to do what we do. The idea of therapy can seem really intimidating. Even the strongest among us should have the courage to reach out and ask for help and to avail themselves of it. Well, that's one of my favorite ideas from Marcus Aurelius. He says, you're like a soldier storming a wall. So what if you've fallen and have to ask a comrade for help? I think about this in my own life, being able to talk to someone about my problems, being able to get feedback and to have a safe space to talk about things. It's not always comfortable. That's sort of the point. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. You'll be matched to a therapist usually within 48 hours, so you can get started fast. Let BetterHelp connect you with a therapist who can support you all from the comfort of your own home. Visit betterhelp.com slash daily stoic today or choose daily stoic during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month of BetterHelp. It's great to have gratitude. We need to have respect, but we have to be more than just happy to be here. Yeah. If I have such a reverence for you, if I'm so impressed with talking to Ryan Holiday today right now, oh my gosh, man. This last hour we've talked would have been a hell of a lot more boring if you didn't find it boring. I wouldn't have been here. I'd have been like listening to what you say and then trying to go follow up and add a little thing onto what you said and go, yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't have dynamic. It wouldn't have been real. I wouldn't have really been myself because I've been so impressed. I would have been sure. not been involved. Going forward with respect and gratitude, but not such a reverence for mortality and mortal things as to not be engaged with them, to be able to give more of ourselves too. We have to be less impressed and more involved to give more of ourselves to our life, to our relationships, to challenges in front of us, to pleasures and promises and wins and losses. Be there with them. Work without attachment is worship hmm. without attachment to the outcome there's another principle like that that says intense work meaning toward for the higher level not yes. just you know digging a ditch is rest hmm. and that's fascinating too yeah when you're doing that work without attachment or intense work you're on the soul level instead of the ego level i have found that starting a book or starting a project is scary and intimidating Finishing or being finished with a project is a bit bittersweet or empty or even disorienting. But there is this middle period where you're well past having started. You have no idea when you're going to finish, but you're just lost in the day to dayness of it. You're operating under the momentum of 
every day stacking on top of itself, that's the most wonderful feeling in the whole world. But see, I've been thinking about that because part of life is pushing through when you don't want to do something mm -hmm. when it doesn't feel like it's coming, right? You have to like yes. develop this sort of tenacity, this stick to itness. And you know, you have these days where like it you the resistance is telling you don't do it. Yep. And you have to push through. Yep. And then you have these other days where you're sick or you're tired or you're just not at 100%. Mm -hmm. And what is the lot like what is the line between you're pushing through for the right reasons or you're not doing it? for the right reason. Can you know I give you I mean? a dumber example? Yeah. Not being able to tell someone you need to get up and pee. Yes. Cause like, I'm thinking about something else. I have to pee. Yeah. I'm all of a sudden suboptimal. And what, am I embarrassed that I'm human? <laughs> yeah. Like we've been sitting here for two hours. May I get up and use the restroom real quick? Like right. that's a harder thing for me to do. Being sick, I kind of am a little more clear on it now. Like I've sort of figured that stuff out. But I mean, I remember I went to a Workaholics Anonymous meeting once. Everyone was late. Yeah. <laughs> by like 40 minutes. <laughs> Everyone rushed in and we all got in trouble because it was a lot of sort of successful people yeah. and you know where I live and everyone was like, "Hey, love your work." And yeah. they're like, "You can't say that here." You know, that's like saying, "You're so entertaining when you drink." Sure. Right? Yeah. And one woman's bottom line was, "I will get up and go to the bathroom when I need to pee." And I used to I used to sit at my computer and think I had achieved something because I had to pee. Yes. Like I would kind of like see how far I, it was like edging or something. I could, yeah, I wanted to see how sure. far I could take it. And mm -hmm. I was like, why? I'm thinking about something else, which means I'm not 100% focused on this, which means this has nothing to do about the with the work. Yes. This is some like self-depriving, masochistic, false sense of um, pain and gain yeah. that is not yielding the best work. Right. No, it took that, me a long a time, really like on Rogan, point. to go, hey, can I get up and pee? We've been here for four and a half hours. It'd be weird if I didn't have to pee. Yeah. But then I would find myself getting less interesting, less entertaining, less funny, because I was just like, do I ask? Do I not ask? And who are you impressing? They don't throw you like a parade for having help. No with the one longest. gives you a check at the end. Yeah. So it's like, you went four hours and yeah. didn't pee. Right. And it's like, do you have a UTI? Are you okay? Like, yeah. you should need, if you're taking care of your health, you should need to. What do you find astonishes you? Is it how different people work or what is it? More what works. Because if someone says, I have an idea, I want to do this. And you hear the idea and it sounds bad. And then they demonstrate it and it's great. That's an example of where the language of explaining things doesn't do it justice. One of the things I talk about in the book is always make a model. Show what it is that you're doing. Yes. Don't say the kind of article you want to write. Write the article, show me the article, then we talk about the article. What's great about that also is it takes it out of the personal. If you have an idea, it's your idea. And then we could argue about your idea and that's personal. Whereas once it's on paper, it's outside of you and it's this thing that we're collaborating on together to make it be the best it could be. We're not talking about your idea now. We're talking about is this sentence the best sentence it could be? That's not a slide against you. That's we're working together to make this sentence the best it could be. Receiving so much positive feedback on the book has made me realize how fleeting it all is. Hopefully don't think the book will be completely irrelevant in 10 years, but it clearly won't be sitting on the New York Times bestseller list in 10 years. Sure. I don't know. I just think I'll be a lot less relevant in 10 years than I am today. And I don't know why, but there's a part of me that both finds that sad if I'm being brutally honest, but there's a part of me that thinks, well, that's good. Like, let's start preparing for that. Let's start preparing for what the next phase of your life looks like. And what does the next 10 years look like versus what are you going to be like when you're 70 and when you're 80? And as anybody this age knows, when you start to do the math, the next 30 years will go by on a relative basis much quicker than the last 30 years did. And yet I still remember being 20 like it was yesterday. Yeah. The last 30 years kind of went by quick too. So to think that the next 30 are going to go by that much quicker. And oh, by the way, before you know it, you'll be dead. Seneca had this word, uh, euthymia, which he said is the sense of the path that you're on. And he said, not being distracted by the paths that crisscross yours, especially from those who are hopelessly lost. Ooh. And that's extremely hard to have at any age. Like, but I think younger, you know, you're like, well, someone's doing this and someone's doing this because you're measuring yourself against all these other people. 
But then as you, even as you become successful, now all of a sudden there's all these things that you can do. Yeah. And it takes an immense amount of discipline. I think also confidence, just like sort of self-awareness and sort of strategy to go like, here's when I'm, here are the things I want to do. Here's when I want to do them. And like not really paying attention to what other people are doing yeah. or everything that's coming, you know, into your inbox. It takes all those things, right? Yeah. And then, then, because you also, that comparison thing, it also just shifts. You just compare yourself to new people, yeah. more successful people, sure. people who are doing incredible things. But I also feel like you get this, if you're not too caught up in that chase and in your own ego and everything, you actually learn to like really settle into the fact that you, you intellectually grasp like, Oh, like he's, I'm not comparing myself to what Ryan's doing, whatever he, he just did. Like he's on his own path and you kind of get this thing where you're like, you're not, you, you find that it doesn't make you go like, what about me? Yes. Like, you know, yeah. like you did, I did do that at 25 and like now, when I hear about that, I don't go like, <gasps> like, what, what am I going to do? You know, like. For too long, we've been in the cities yeah. and cities are designed to mask you from our mortality. Here on the, on the ranch and the farm within nature, you are hitting up against that razor's edge. Everything is trying to survive, trying to live. Something dies and something else eats it. We know the longhorn skulls that are on the wall in mm -hmm. the bookstore. So we bought the place and then the neighboring guy had the cows. He was like, do you want to buy my cows? So we got these cows immediately after we got them. They all started dying of old age and they're called the vet and the vet's like okay i could come out like next week be like 250 dollars. i'll like yeah. put it down he's like you have a gun right you should take care of it do i want to let this thing suffer for an additional week yeah. while oh, we wait oh, for the yeah, vet yeah. right not only is being in charge of your choice making about your own life and how you be it's also about what you take responsibility for you took charge of that situation to be a protector to be mm -hmm. compassionate i hope you like this video i hope you subscribe but what I really want you to subscribe to is our daily Stoic email, one bit of Stoic wisdom, totally for free to the largest community of Stoics ever in existence. You can sign up at dailystoic.com slash email. There's no spam. You can unsubscribe at any time. I love sending it. I've sent it every day for the last six years. And I hope to see you there at dailystoic.com slash email.